Hello and welcome to my studio. We are working on shapes today. We're gonna draw a stained glass window. So I have my drawing materials here. I'm gonna start out with my trusty charcoal because it gives me a thick black line. We've talked about in our discussion that most stained glass windows have a very thick line of that metal or solder in between the glass when they used to make those. So we'll start out here. Let's check and see if I got a good piece. And, oh, let's see. If you want to draw the frame of the stained glass window, you can, just to give you an idea. So, and, and remember, stained glass windows don't always have to be um, geometric. They don't always have to be square or rectangular. They can be like a, an arch or a circle, any type of shape you want. I, on the other hand, I'm just going to stick with a basic rectangle just for the sake of time and convenience and ease. So if you're thinking about a stained glass window, you want to make sure that you want to know what your design is going to be. Um, this is totally a sketch. You want to know what your design is going to be because basically a stained glass window is going to have a picture of something, a person, an animal, um, I don't know, a dragon, a flower, something that has been abstracted, not to the point where you can't really tell what it is, but to the point where it's broken up into individual shapes. So I'm going to decide what I want to do. I think I want to use a combination of organic and geometric. I might just keep the geometric on the edge and put the organic in the center. And I don't really know what I'm going to do, but just remember your um, stained glass window is going to have a line that separates each section. So, and remember, I am working off to the side over here. You want to make big, bold shapes if you can. And they're going to be separated or touching. They can touch because just remember, if they do touch, they're going to have um, the color of the glass in between. So you just want something very bold. Um, the, the larger you make the spaces, um, the easier it might be to work with. And it can be asymmetrical or it can be symmetrical. I'm kind of just winging this over here. You don't want them to overlap. Hmm. So I'm just being very bold and freehand right about now. And they can be close together or they can be spread apart. I'm gonna leave some, I think some area on the edge and on the border to make some uh, geometric edges here. So you want to be you want to be uh, confident with your lines. So you kind of need to know a plan if you want a plan, uh, or you can make it up as you go. But just remember, it's going to be large areas of space because. In an actual stained glass window, this is metal in between that holds the glass in place. And I'm just kind of, I don't know, thinking here. And the more complicated it gets, the more colors you have. I'm going to get my eraser because I don't like that little piece. So you don't want it to look like a sketch, like you don't want little frayed lines sticking out because that'll make it look like a sketch and in the window you don't have that you have definite definitive pieces of space or areas of space okay um and if you want to be creative you can even combine some geometric and organic shapes in there that, i like that that makes it Nice and pleasing to the eye. So remember your organic shapes are more fluid. They are more 
curve sometimes. You, you're not going to have a whole bunch of straight lines. You're not going to have perfectly 90 degree angles, perfect 90 degree angles. Uh, you'll have you have some points, but not perfect lines and angles. Geometric shapes, on the other hand, we know those are going to be more like our man-made mathematical shapes, like squares, rectangles, triangles, circles, cones, cylinders. Even if you get into the um, three-dimensional part of it, they're still going to be geometric. All right, what do I want to do here? I want to start making some of my background. And I'm kind of doing this intuitively. I'm kind of like doing like puzzle pieces, sort of. And I think I want to start with my... Yeah, if you think about it like a puzzle piece. Now this part, I'm totally making up off the top of my head and I'm gonna now these aren't perfectly straight but you get the point um, I'm gonna kind of start putting some geometrics in here so I'm gonna make that go start to get on my border I'm gonna fill that in probably with more geometric shapes and it'll be more organic towards the center that's just what I want to do you don't have to do that I think I want a big leaf I have no idea maybe right here I don't know I didn't know if I wanted to join that or not, but I just did. So when you're doing a stained glass window, you don't want your lines to overlap. It's probably going to make a mess, but we'll see. You want definitive areas, definitive space, definitive lines, no sketchy, no overlapping, no crisscrossing. It needs to be bold and beautiful. I think I want to do something like, I don't know what I want to do with that. So there goes my, so you can tell when that confidence goes out the window for a second. Let's do that. And uh, that should be more straight. Hmm. Now, see, I messed that up. I wanted that to be straight, but I curved over here from my angle. So this is just a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now that's bothering me. So I'm going to take my eraser and just neaten that up a bit, even though it's not perfectly straight. I'd rather it not have that overlap there. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Maybe this could be like the ground. Okay, and so I need to make my, I'm holding my tool so I get a wide, um, my paper is warping. I'm holding my tool so I get a wide line. See how it's making my paper warp. All right, so I'm going to go back over that a little harder. There we go. I'll go this way. Um. Just to make that easy. So I've got, I've got a combination. So there's a geometric shape. This is more geometric, but it's not, you know, perfect. Uh, and then I'll just come down here. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe like that. So I'm kind of focusing my organic shape in the middle. You don't have to do that. The whole thing can be a ge geometric or the whole thing can be organic. Or you can have a combination. It's up to you. But if you're going to do a, a subject of, of something, you know, whatever your object is going to be, you want to make sure you know what that is. Kind of having a, a plan. You don't necessarily have to have a plan. Like, I had an idea, but I didn't know all my details. And I'm just doing this because this is charcoal, and it's giving me that fuzzy look. I think this is a medium piece, and I really want to soft. Try not to smear it. Okay. I've got a smudge here. And this can be black and white. You don't have to have color. Although we all know that stained glass windows usually have color. This example or this um, assignment was just asking for basically a drawing. I like those little circles though. I should have put some of those over here. Maybe I have room to put one 
maybe I need to add that. Maybe they, they could be like some berries or something. Oh, whoops, my charcoal is. Um, I might do that circle. They could be like, it's abstracted berries. So abstract art. A lot of people confuse that with non-representational. Abstract art is a picture of something that has been changed in a way that it doesn't exist in the real world. Non-representational art is a picture and it's not like, you know, you can just do a bunch of scribbles. It's not something. It's just, you know, just all colors or all lines or what have you. Uh, let's see. Hmm. The lines can connect or you can have spaces in between. No, that's, that's a soft piece. That's what I want. I was thinking that I wanted some circles there, but maybe I'll put one here. My circles aren't perfect, but you get the point. Hmm. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to fill in my whole space. I don't know. Now this area in there could be black, but then you have to keep up with that. Or the lines that I'm drawing can be just your black lines in between, but you have to keep up with that also. So how complicated do you want to make it is your question. So why don't I stick with this, um, I guess this theme that I have over here with these rectangular shapes coming off the side. How far do I want to go up there with that? How far down do I want to go? And that's not perfect, but it's okay. Hmm. Just think big, bold, black lines and big spaces in the middle. It should look like a coloring book. It should look like a coloring book that's blank, that hasn't been colored in yet. Okay. I'm really loving the circles. I got to do some more with the circles. I like the circles. I'm really liking the circles. This was not pre-drawn. This was not pre-planned. I just... I'm really loving the circles. That just makes me happy. Why? Maybe because we've got such strong lines and angles here and the circles just kind of soften it up i don't know they make me happy right here i'm loving the circles and it can be asymmetric or symmetric like i said hmm, interesting where am i going to go with that one i don't know change my mind here I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna erase well that's not too bad and I might put another rectangle over here on the side like I did over there just to give it some sort of balance how far do I want to go over with that piece I don't know All right, let's start mirroring these rectangles and let's put one here let's just put a big one here Oh my goodness, my curves, my lines are curving. And let's do another rectangle here. And this is totally intuitive. I'm not even, you know, thinking about this. I'm not even, I didn't give it a whole bunch of thought. I'm just kind of filling in space. Now, something happy at the top. I don't know, maybe some, like something that looks like some sun's rays or maybe some flower petals. I don't know. I want something that maybe comes like something from here like kind of triangles, kind of more like this shape, maybe. I don't know, I'm just totally making this up as I go. 
Uh, where do I want that? I could do like a, maybe something like this. And mirror that. I wanted it more out that way though, but that's okay. So why don't I put one out that way? Why don't I go here? And then maybe, maybe just keep on going then. And then do the same on that side. So that's gonna give me one pretty one in the middle. Let's make that one fill up a lot of space. Nice and curvy. And let's go, let's try to make it kind of symmetrical. I'm getting charcoal in the paper. Little smudges. And you don't have to use charcoal. I'm just doing this for camera's sake so that you can see it on the video. Uh, it's kind of starting to look like an Aztec thing, sort of a Mayan look with these shapes here. And I need one big one over there on the side. So let's go like that. Uh, not too bad. And I could either put some of those circles. I love the circles. So if you want to fill in the gaps, you could. Now, if you did that, just that's going to be a really bold black line. Or you could have color in there and just let your black lines be your black lines. So you can have little thin areas of color or you can fill it in. Just remember, if you fill it in, it's going to be really, really thick. Um, I'm not going to fill mine in yet because I haven't decided. Mine were touching here, but then I put spaces here. So it gives it more of a frame look on the side. Now, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I want to, I want a circle. I'm liking the circle thing. I want a circle here. That doesn't look like a circle, but it's okay. You get the point. And let's put one over here. Now, I don't want to leave that stuff at the top blank. I'm going to take two more minutes and finish this. So what could I do? I could just do my mirror those shapes. And that can fill in a quick space. There you go. Not difficult. Just kind of goes together like a puzzle. And let's keep that going over here. And I think I'll go right over here and then fill in that other little side and then we're done. So as long as you keep it consistent, even if your lines are not perfectly straight, and yes, you can use a ruler if you want to, but as long as you connect it or have it, you know, parallel, it'll start looking right. Your eye will put it together, you know, because even if it's wavy, that, that won't bother you as much because it's consistent. So let's fill in that last little thing over there. So, there we go. Nice little stained glass window.